This is Voice the Culture, a podcast for the modern day confused citizen. Hello, we are back with another episode. I'm your podcast host, Helen. I'm Kelly. I'm Michelle. And I'm Carolyn. In this episode, we'll be discussing all things mental health. Disclaimer, this podcast contains opinionated ideas. Please do not consider everything factual and remember to fact check everything before forming conclusions. For many of us, AP exams are officially over. For those that do not know what AP exams are, they are advanced placement tests created by the College Board. The College Board states that, quote, AP exams are standardized exams designed to measure how well you master the content and skills of a specific AP course, end quote. Students in the United States take these exams in May. They usually cost around $90 each and typically contain a multiple choice section and a free response section. However, this year, due to the current pandemic, AP exams have been moved online and require students to answer free response questions in 45 minutes. How do you guys feel about this whole situation? Um, I hate the time constraint because honestly, it adds a lot of stress on us because I feel like we need to process the text that College Board gives us and that already takes up a lot of time. And the whole submitting thing is really hard yeah. to get a hold of. Like, like I have to take, retake my A-push exam because I couldn't submit. Yeah, I yeah. feel like they shouldn't just give us five minutes to submit the thing, you know, because there's always going to mm. be like errors, glitches and stuff. I feel like at least they should give us like maybe like 10 minutes, you know, to make mm. sure that everything's all correct. Yeah, and, I wrote about that in the, the survey at the end. The college board says, how did you rate your experience? And then they like give you a box to explain what you wrote. And I said, you should have given us 10 minutes to submit. It was harder to submit than to actually take the test. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I feel like they should sh- just add more questions. Like the fact that it's only like mm-hmm. two questions in like 45 minutes, I feel like it puts more pressure because you're only graded on those like two questions. Like some, for some exams, it's only one, two. So, mm-hmm. and like just the fact that it's like only graded on like one or two questions, like it just puts more um, pressure on us because like, AP readers are going to, like, only look at those two questions to determine if you pass or not. And you, like, paid, like, $90 for it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's, like, way too much money, too. It's not like we're, we have, like, physical test copies or anything, like, provided to us. So it's not like we have, they're providing us with any, like, you know, essentials. Because mm-hmm. I have to keep on going back and forth, like, looking at the question and then looking at my own document. Like, I wish they, they had a better system. It was also really hard to annotate, you know? Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you couldn't annotate, which is really annoying. Like, I wanted to highlight stuff, but you couldn't. Yeah, it was really inconvenient. Um, when I was doing the AP laying exam, I had to, like, write my notes above my essay. And, like, when I write, I have to, like, scroll up to look at my notes. It also takes up time, too. So, I don't know. And then, like, a normal exam, we have so many other things that balance it, like, multiple choice. And we have a lot of other free response questions. This time it was only like one or two questions. Mm -hmm. So how did you guys feel before and after now that the AP exams are over in terms of mental health? Honestly, I feel like way more relaxed, you know, because like the stress of the AP exams was like, it was really stressful. Yeah, I haven't done anything like after like all my (laughs) exams are over except listen to music. Yeah. yeah, yeah, same. I feel like school is just over now, you know? Yeah. Like, no. I'm, like, treating AP exams as if they're, like, the finals, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's weird. I didn't think it had that much, like, impact on me until, like, after we were done. I'm, like, and then this past week, I haven't done anything, like, even more so than I haven't been doing anything. And I'm, like, oh, wow, like, AP exams have that much effect on me. It's like, weird. Because yeah. before, I was so stressed about it because the fact that it was only one question, I was, like, okay, I have to study everything. I have to, like, put my all into this one question. If you're gonna, like, give us, like, one or two questions, at least, like, give us more time to do it. Because, mm-hmm. like, I swear, for my chem one, there were so many sections, like, for one question. You were given, like, 30 mm-hmm. minutes to complete one question that had, like, sections from, like, A to L. And oh. it was crazy. Some people got to, like, N and like they put the whole alphabet mm. in there yeah for real <laughs> it's literally half the alphabet and like a lot of them are like explanation based you have to like write a lot for each one because mm. like they require like explanation it was like a lot of showing work that was so bad it was so stressful yeah yeah, yeah same oh my god 
I feel like so many people are put at a disadvantage too, because especially for those who don't have the access to technology. And if you don't oh, already yeah. have that t- access to technology, like even if your school provides it, maybe you're not used to typing. So I know there's a lot of people who like don't type regularly, so they can't type fast, so they're a lot slower on the exams. And it's not even their fault. It's just maybe they just can't type fast. Yeah, I like saw a lot of people on TikTok posting about how they couldn't submit their exams and they were just crying and trying to email yeah. College Board, but College Board response was just, just take the makeup. But why would you take the makeup? It was their fault yeah. their servers weren't working. Yeah, exactly. And College Board blamed it on like old servers. They're like, oh, you're like old browsers. Your computer's old. Where in fact, like a lot of people are just using their normal, like up to date computers, and it's College Board system that made like everything crash. Yeah, and they should also be more prepared about this. You know, like what are they doing with our money then? I don't understand why we all have to take it at the same time. Like I get it, just to like it makes it harder to like cheat, but I don't understand why they can't just like make multiple exams and then give them to like each time zone at times that are like most yeah. convenient for them because like for like us it's like it's okay we take it at like 11 for a lot of the exams but for Hawaii they have to wake up at like 5 30 and take the exam yeah. at 6 in the morning it's just not convenient and like mm-hmm. international students have to like take it at like two each exam had like five different comps or something so if they already came up with so many different comps why couldn't they just distribute it like over time mm-hmm. And what's also, like, really frustrating is that, so, like, for our AP psychology exam, uh, for the first part, they also gave us, like, the question wasn't, like, something that we learned during the school year, you know? The vocabulary terms that they asked us to, like, an- analyze and define were, like, they were not familiar at all. I looked at it, like, in my textbook, because it's, like, open notes, right? And it wasn't even in my textbook either. I saw on Twitter that, like, people were talking about how, like, those were terms that no one learned and like professionals who actually work in psychology in the psychology field even they like had no idea what those terms were students who are living that course who like they're just learning and we're just like actual professionals who work in that field and even they don't know it then how do you expect us to know it yeah it was it's really frustrating because then on top of all like this virtual thing going on we also have to new like you know unfamiliar terms so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, have you guys heard about College Board getting sued? Are they getting sued for like? Oh yeah, five five hundred million. million? Yeah. I hope I hope they lose. You know. (laughs) I know. I hope. Who's suing them again? Like students or parents? I think. California students sue College Board after being unable to submit AP exams. Yeah, so students, I, I want to be a part of it. What? We should all sue College Board. <laughs> I, I hate how, like, they, as an excuse, uh, they, they said, like, oh, uh, 91% of you guys wanted to take the um, AP exams this year, so this is what you get. They were like, oh, yeah, we surveyed all the AP students, but mm-hmm. I never got the survey. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Yeah, I was me like, either. Okay, oh, survey? No one has ever heard of this survey. Yeah, it was a bit suspicious because then, like, overall most of like the public opinion was like really opposed to this you know Mm. and like okay honestly i don't really mind ap exams but like it's just really frustrating because you're not addressing like any of the issues that the students are saying you know they're like just ignoring it i hate how like you have to like request for a makeup too like if you don't have a good enough reason they don't let you (laughs) bro that's stupid like like, and you don't get a response like i've been waiting for a response from college board and i haven't gotten one so I don't even know if I'm able to retake my exam or not. Did you rec- just request for a makeup now? And if they say you don't have to retake it later, like when they email you back, then they, they, they cancel it for you. Just request for like a makeup. No, just I, like- yeah, I already requested a makeup like that day. Okay, okay. And I, there's like nothing from College Boy. I'm like, I don't even know if I'm retaking it or not. I'll wait. I, uh... So apparently the lawsuit comes from a group of students in LA and it claims that the College Board ignored warnings that the online tests would discriminate against students with disabilities and students who lack access to the digital technology needed to take the at-home AP exams. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think we like mentioned that earlier too about like it's giving a dis- disadvantage to people who don't have the access or like people who don't have like a quiet space at home to work. Like I, when I was filling out the makeup, you know, the makeup like form thing, it, it there's a bunch of reasons it asked you like why you couldn't complete the exam, and a lot of the reasons would were like, oh, like my my internet cut out or I didn't have a quiet workspace, 
and stuff like that. And I was like, if you're, if you didn't have like your internet access like cut, or if you didn't have a quiet workspace, what is retaking the exam gonna do? Because when you retake the exam, the same problems are gonna happen again. Wow, I didn't think of that. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Or like disabilities, I think was one of the things. It was like, if you have a disability, then like, how are you gonna fix that? I'm like, oh, like I'm suddenly not gonna have a disability. I can retake the test. Yeah. I also wanted to ask you guys how you seen your mental health change from physical school versus online school. Do you like it better or worse? I feel like there's less pressure with online mm-hmm. school, knowing that our March 13th grade is our floor grade. So like, you can't lower your grade from like not doing work. But I feel like at the same time, that's like not motivating for like a lot of like students. So then they just give up and don't attend classes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like I honestly thought it was gonna be better because I was like, okay, like online school, it's gonna be less stressful. Yeah, and whatever. But mm-hmm. it's bringing my motivation down even more so than before. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. And especially like some classes like actually have due dates for things, and I find myself actually doing the work for those classes versus classes that don't have a due date. I just never do it. Yeah, like for math homework, like our teacher just said, like, oh, you guys can turn in whenever. Just don't do it like super late. Well, I haven't even done it yet, and school's about to end in like what two weeks? Two weeks next week. Oh my god. Last oh week's... yeah, next week. Oh my god. <laughs> That's so it crazy. Even, it doesn't even seem like it's like the last week, you know? Right? It feels crazy. Like, there's no way that it's about to be June in like a week, I think. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. That's so crazy to me. Like, mm-hmm. school's already over. We did that, yeah. guys. We finished. <laughs> <laughs> junior year. Oh we did that. When, when people said like junior year was bad, like, they told me it, it was bad. And like, mm-hmm. I went in knowing that it's going to be like pretty bad. But like this year was just it's not bad. it. Yeah, dude. It, it was an it understatement. Yeah. It's so funny too because like when we saw like the juniors last year, they were like tired or whatever. But like I feel mm. like that's every high school student. But like they 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 took it fine. So then I was like, okay, I maybe I can do it too. And then like this year, I tanked. If there was like so much to do, SATs, APs, and just like like researching for like colleges which I haven't done yet so. Me neither. <laughs> no yeah no speaking of SATs like you guys heard that they're canceling right for the next forever oh now. yeah the UCs are canceling like SAT requirements mm-hmm. yeah for the next five years they're suspending the requirements and then I think after those five years they're just they're gonna come up with their own test mm-hmm. oh, what, isn't then, it still encouraged or something though right yeah. I think it's just encouraged to maybe help your chances, but they're not requiring it. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to feel about it. Like, at first, I was happy. I was like, oh, cool. Like, because SATs are pretty dumb, in my opinion. Cause A lot of people think, like, they test for intelligence, but, like, they just mm-hmm. test you on how well you take the test. Yeah, because maybe you can't take tests well. Like, there's a lot of people who are very smart, but they just can't, like, do, like, a multiple choice test. Mm-hmm. Yeah, SATs just gave me test anxiety, so... Mm-hmm. And yeah, it, is, it shouldn't measure like how you fit into a college. I feel like at first I was pretty happy that it's not required for um, college apps too. Mm-hmm. But I feel like now since like they're not requiring SATs and ACTs and stuff, they're going to put more emphasis on your extracurriculars and um, essays. Yeah, definitely. essays as well so like if you're not strong in those areas then like it's gonna be pretty challenging to get in that's why i think it's like hard for us or especially our class like class of 2021 because i feel like for other classes like oh because it's over the um the next like five years and whatever they have time to build their extracurriculars and stuff but for us we've already taken the sat and everyone has already studied so hard for the sat and then now they're like oh okay we don't need it anymore so we only have our senior year to build our extracurriculars, but that's barely enough time because college apps are due like October, right? Yeah, they're when due. The early action ones and early decision ones are usually October, November-ish. I just don't like how, especially at the school that we go to, because we go to a pretty competitive school in the Bay Area, there's just so mm-hmm. much pressure to get into a prestigious college like the UCs or like privates. Yeah. yeah, and I've noticed like more and more people are going to community college, which means they're depending on transferring to UCs Mm -hmm. so like that means it's just harder to get into UCs Mm -hmm. I feel like they shouldn't put 
there's such like emphasis on like brand name schools you know I feel like it's really um what matters like the most is what you're learning you know mm-hmm. and like what you're happy yeah. with learning but like there's just so much like pressure of entering like a STEM major and like mm-hmm. a pres- and going to like a prestigious school that like yeah if st- if STEM isn't like what you're passionate about I don't think you should go into STEM you should like pursue what you're passionate about and like mm-hmm. I feel like colleges don't emphasize that or like school yeah. in general like or just like Asians I feel like in general I feel like in in, like in as an Asian like everyone expects you to get into an amazing like an Ivy League school or a UC or something. But yeah, most POC like families, you know. Yeah, POC in general too. Like I feel like education you can get your education anywhere though because every college teaches the same material. It's just the it's the communities that make it different, which is why people Mm want to get into prestigious schools is the competition and people around you but you can get your that education anywhere else and you don't necessarily have to go to these schools and you have and so many people who get into these schools like they do very well in school prior to getting to those schools and yet the second they get into those super hard schools they fail all their classes because the stress is like way too much on them yeah definitely yeah i don't think any college or university is worth sacrificing your overall mental well-being over especially at these more Mm -hmm. like competitive schools and I, yeah. and there's also like this really negative like stigma regarding like community colleges, you know, mm-hmm. like I feel like most parents, um, they view community college as something like if you fail all your classes and stuff, that's like the only option you go to, you know, well, while like community college, they actually offer like a lot of chances for you, you know, yeah. and like it's mm-hmm. way cheaper. It's a really you- smart option. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Michelle, I'm glad that you brought the stigma up because our next question is, why is mental health such a stigmatized topic in the Asian community specifically? Yeah, I feel like most parents, they sort of like avoid the topic, you know? And like, it's really hard to like talk to your parents about this because then like, if you do, they like, they sort of make it like a competition, you know? They compare your own experience Mm -hmm. to theirs Mm -hmm. and they're like, like, you know, like, oh yeah, well, you're sad, but I have to walk to school, like, (laughs) <laughs> every day like three miles you know like oh my so god annoying. okay bro for real <laughs> like i understand your struggles but like pay attention to my struggles too yeah don't invalidate my struggles with what you went through mm-hmm. i feel like in like especially in like uh, asian culture mental illness is seen as like a weakness too like if you say you have mental issues their response would be oh just be happy Oh, just get better. <laughs> <Real. Let's> get better. <laughs> yeah. And like, I feel like it also has to do with where they came from as well, what mm-hmm. values they were raised on. I feel like back then, for my family, my dad and uh, mom came from like Vietnam. They weren't like like well off. They were like middle class, but like they weren't like rich or anything. So then like they had to constantly help out with like um, their parents and like uh, work and stuff. And I feel like back then there's like no time to like look back be reflective and like check in on yourself because you're you're always constantly having to take care of others whereas here Mm -hmm. students and just adolescents they're they spend the majority of their time at like schools especially if you're like in a competitive environment you're constantly comparing yourself to everyone else and like thinking oh you can do better at this or you're not good enough and like that just also leads to mental health issues and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I feel like for us, like especially here, a lot more emphasis is put on extracurriculars and because we have time to do extracurriculars and find stuff that we're passionate about. Whereas our parents and like where they came from, they didn't have time to do extracurriculars because oh, yeah. all they had to do was work and t- um, take care and like help out their families. Yeah. And so they, they don't think that like extracurriculars are needed. Yeah, especially in Asian culture, they really value collectivism, which is where you would put everyone else's needs before yours. So it's kind of like filial piety where Mm -hmm. the family comes first versus in more Western culture, it's more emphasized on individuality and putting your own needs first. Wow, big words. (laughs) (laughs) Individuality. This brings me back to (laughs) (laughs) black. According to the National Latino and Asian American Study, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders are three times less likely to seek mental health services than their white counterparts. What do you guys think? Mm-hmm. 
I think it just uh, it's it's due to like how we're how we're raised too, and like our background and like our parents' backgrounds and the values they they grew up with. They kind of like try to teach their values to us. Um, that plays a part in like having developing like mental health issues and then like not seeking for help. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I think we never talk about it with our parents. I feel like for white people, like w- their parents communicate a lot better and even talk about their issues if they're having any issues. Whereas for POC, we never ever talk about those issues. You know, mm-hmm. and I feel like I don't even talk to my parents about like anything. The only thing I talk about is like school and like how I'm doing in school and my schedule and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just our conversations with our parents are completely different from like a lot of Western parents as well. Like, let's say if I had like a fight with um, my dad or something, we wouldn't say like sorry to each other. Yeah. Like, their way of apologizing is like to cut up fruit. Oh my god, bring like, fruit to your room. And I'm like, okay, thanks. Like, I, <laughs> they don't say anything and they never admit when they're wrong. They don't say anything. And like, after it, it's just completely quiet and they just bring, they drop off fruit at your table and they're like, that's it. Ta-da! We're good now. Like, yeah, they don't like talking about it. It's, mm-hmm. it's obviously like kids take after their parents. So like we adopt those mannerisms, and we we never talk about those things either. Mm-hmm. And like you know, like when Western parents say that, like, oh yeah, my parents are like my best friend. You know, I I can <laughs> just never understand Ooh, it. Could not be, I and I, I want to. You know, I want to be close to my parents, but it's just so hard to like communicate with them because it's like mm-hmm. it's, I feel like there's like this wall between us because we can't talk and like express ourselves i think there's also like a language barrier too just because it's really hard for me to communicate my native language to my parents half the time i don't even know what i'm saying oh yeah same oh my god <laughs> like like it's not that like we're not like fluent in our language it's just i don't know like there are certain terms like how can i explain that in that language yeah and, and like they don't they sort of have like difficulty with like english as well you know we can't really express mm-hmm. like some mm-hmm. certain situations with them because yeah you know. and like even if we do know like the word for it like it just doesn't translate over yeah like, it comes out like wrong yeah and it's like i don't know it's sort of frustrating because i understand they came from like a difficult background where like not everything is like handed to them easily but just sometimes when when i need to like discuss things with them I know I can't because they just won't understand it or like they'll they'll look down upon th- those problems. I think it's stems from our parents having to grow up so fast because their own yeah. parents had to work all day and so they had to become independent so quickly at, at a young age so we, they expect us to be so independent because we had to like become independent so quickly they expect us to solve our own problems really quickly and easily but we're still really young and we don't necessarily know how to solve those issues yet and we need our parents guidance and the only guidance that they do give us because they do give us a lot of guidance but it's for school and not for issues like mental health issues i feel like to them our only focus should be like school um like relationships and just like other things in general is like put like second to like that you know school is like our only top priority and stuff and like at times I feel like our parents they want us to be independent but then they're forcing us to be dependent as well you know yeah they could be so overprotective sometimes but then they also expect us to do things ourselves without like letting us like yeah I never go you know I can't like drive until I'm 18 and I know that once I am able to drive like they won't even let me go anywhere and I just oh yeah but at the same time, they're like, they want me to solve my own issues, but I can't, I can't have experiences. Like, with the whole, also, like, dating, I feel like, like, yes, I don't want to, like, rush anything with dating, but they're like, they, they don't want me to date until, like, after college. And I'm like, after college, everyone else has all these experiences, but I don't have any experience, so how am I supposed to date? Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just think there's just so much differences in terms of expectations and communication that we have in our relationship with our parents that makes it so hard to talk about things like mental health and our overall well-being. Yeah, Yeah, and I also feel like there's also, like, a difference between, like, our beliefs. Because, like, they also, because they come from, most of them come from, like, a different country, they have, like, like, beliefs and, like, stereotypes of like other mm. races mm-hmm. you know yeah. like because we live in america we develop like our own independent thinking and stuff mm-hmm. so like it's like different it also like comes with theirs you know 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like Western beliefs and values are still pretty foreign to them, and like mm-hmm. that that just causes a lot of conflicts because they just don't understand, which is not entirely their fault, but it mm-hmm. does causes like conflict and um, clashes um, with like mental health. It's like frustrating. Because most of the time, their argument would be like, "Oh, I don't know why you're you're making like such a big deal because like you're sad. Just like get better. Just be happy. <laughs> like turn that frown upside down." And like it's not just like Asians too. Like like a lot of times, like like people look down on like those with like mental health issues that like seek help and like Mm -hmm. they're often perceived as like being weak for like seeking help for like something that doesn't seem like that severe or like like that problematic Uh, it's so frustrating to me because when you break a limb when you break an arm or leg you go to the hospital to get better so why is it that when you like your heart (laughs) yeah (laughs) Uh, <laughs> like yeah like like your your mind is broken and like you're depressed that you can't seek out for help it's literally the mm-hmm. same thing it's just that your this is like your brain being damaged instead of your limb so now that we've kind of talked about the key issues regarding mental health awareness in honor of AAPI heritage month i want to ask you guys what are some kind of key tips to take away from this and how can we better manage our mental health I feel like music can be like a great help with mental health um, because there's like research that have shown that there are benefits to um, music therapy. And by that, I mean like um, lyric analysis, improvisation and songwriting. And it's it's been like uh, scientifically proven that it uh, helps out with depression, trauma and um, schizophrenia and like other Um, mental health issues and it's also like a way to like express yourself and like your feelings you know because like sometimes it's really hard to like talk about issues so you could like to express it with your own music or something even just like listening to like other people's music you get like influenced by it too you know and like it makes you feel Mm -hmm. like there's like an escape like from reality and yeah um yeah no I find music helps me a lot because a lot of times I can't just talk to anyone about like mental health issues like even like not even to my friends like I love you all but I can't even talk because <laughs> like I don't know I take on like that Asian stereotype like I'm just very secretive about things I don't talk to, about things and so I listen to music or I write my own lyrics or poems and stuff and that helps me get out a lot if I can't talk about things so yeah music Ooh. is just really good and like just writing in general you guys should listen to Tyler the creator you know songs are pretty good oh he's good yeah and daniel yeah. caesar I, I love his song oh my god yes yeah. daniel caesar yes. <laughs> oh k-pop okay. is also like pretty good you know the <laughs> diversity please stream um one of my favorites off like his new album is people you guys should listen to it it's so good yeah and it talks about mental health too and how it's okay to um just be sad once in a while like okay I feel like most of the time people assume that like being sad is like considered depression when it's like not. I feel like like especially like like at school people throw around the word depression a lot. Oh when, yeah, like, it's really yeah. annoying. Yeah. It's not un- uncommon to hear somebody be like like I'm so tired of school, I'm depressed, you know? Yeah. And like, like I'm going yeah. to myself kind of triggering for some people. Yeah, it's like, just it's so just difficult. normalizing this like idea that like sadness is like depression when it's mm-hmm. not. I feel like yes, you should seek help if you're like having like suicidal thoughts. But I feel like it's us as humans we we need these emotions to help us grow as a person. Mm-hmm. That sounded really cheesy, but <laughs> no, no, it's true. That's why I really like this song. Like the melody is really nice, but like also it just discuss how like. You know, it's okay to be, like, sad once in a while because it's natural because we're all just people. We're not all perfect. And, like, even though it's expected of us to be happy all the time, we should remember that we are, at the end of the day, human. And, yeah. Oh. That was my TED talk. (laughs) Oh, I also heard that exercising helps a lot, too. You know? Yeah. That increase of serotonin, you know? Yeah, like, if you're feeling, like, really, like, tired, because I know a lot of, like, 
especially now with quarantine, everyone's just stuck at home and we're all feeling really bored and tired all the time. And exercise can like increase that. Like it wakes you up and it just makes you feel really good after. Yeah, I think especially during quarantine, now that we're stuck at home and we don't really have any work to do, we're kind of just left alone to follow like, you know, what we want to do. And it kind of forces you to really reflect on your life and what you value. And personally for me, I kind of went through this like identity crisis where I thought about, okay, you know, now that I have so much free time, what do I want to do with it? And so I've been trying to like, you know, exercise to maintain my health and like read a lot of books and just stay engaged with what's going on. Yeah, I heard there's been, like, a lot of students who are, like, usually, like, in class, they would be, like, focused, they would have, like, straight A's and everything, but now that there's, like, this quarantine situation, they have felt, like, really unmotivated, they haven't, like, turned in any assignments, Mm -hmm. they haven't done anything, you know, because there's no, like, goals, there's nothing to do, you know? Yeah, that's why I encourage everyone to, like, find something you're passionate about and just put your all into it, like, you have nothing to lose at this point. Just put your all into it. It's something that you really love doing. It's it's something to work towards during this time because during this time there's like nothing. Everyone's just a slump, like a blob at home, I'm just like <laughs> I'm stuck at home. And I'm like, oh, I have nothing to do. And so just find something you're passionate about. And I also heard that journaling also helps, especially like during quarantine, because like not only do you like reflect your own thoughts, you're also like writing down like the experience that's happening during like coronavirus. And um, I got this idea from one of my teachers and they basically said like, it could like pass, you could pass your journal down to like generations and stuff. Cause then like your children or your grandchildren can like see this and they'll be like, oh wow. Like, you know, this person lived through like the coronavirus and they will be able to like get a perspective of like what happened. Yeah, cause we're living through like a pretty big moment in history right now. And you know, if you just write down your thoughts and stuff like, people in the future can look back and like just really see like wow like this is because we can't just explain it like 20 years later you know i don't know maybe you're gonna forget it you're gonna gonna yeah yeah. have you guys seen the memes where i'm gonna tell my children i survived the pandemic and then (laughs) i was gonna gonna run up i was like man i'm gonna continue like because our asian parents are like i had to walk through the pouring rain 20 miles every day like i'm gonna do the same thing i was like <laughs> yes. man, i can't do anything at home we were on no, lockdown really. <laughs> yeah. no but think about it though like our experience it's gonna be like someone's going to write about this like in the frq you know oh my god <laughs> yeah, I, know. I was like wow fu- hello future wap students or a push students anyone future history t- t- um, students you guys are writing about us cool <laughs> <laughs> but like also not cool because this is the pandemic is terrible um <laughs> People yeah. stay home, please. Oh my god. Oh, yeah, please stay home. I'm okay. It's starting to get. It's Memorial Day weekend. Um, it's getting really hot. People are going out again. Like I don't know for some reason these past week, like two weeks, people just completely forgot about quarantine, and mm-hmm. everyone's just going out. And I'm like, hello, we still have qu- quarantine. Staying at home, the shelter in place orders are still going on. I don't know why people are going out, but. I think if you are staying at home and you're like bored, it's really important that you still reduce your screen time and try to unplug from social media. Mm-hmm. That way you're not really caught up with all the horrible coronavirus updates and you have time to spend on other things. Yeah, it's very easy to spiral during this time. Yeah, so like be sure to like have some, like get some sun. And that's it for our third episode. If you like what you hear, please check out all our socials to keep updated with upcoming episodes, articles, and other content. All our ads are at Voice the Culture. You can also subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we upload a video. We hope you guys continue to practice social distancing. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for listening. Bye. 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 <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that was a really okay, we, Why did we stop being... really? Wow. Like, I...